Mystery House. Mystery House, that strange publishing firm owned by Dan and Barbara Glenn, where each new novel is acted out by the Mystery House staff before it is accepted for publication. Mystery House. Ah, greetings, Thespians. Greetings, Mrs. Glenn. Hi, Bobby. I think this story is going to make a good book, and I'll be anxious to know if it fools you people. Oh, a fooler, huh? Right. I think it'll keep you guessing right up to the last scene. You know, Mrs. Glenn, I wonder if it's a good idea to keep people guessing. I don't see why not. Well, I'll bet there are listeners right now, for instance, wondering what news the sponsor has for them, and really, I don't think we should keep them guessing any longer. Okay, places, everybody. Set the scene, Tom. Well, well. Another body. Tonight's story opens in the comfortable office of Lieutenant Morse, a police officer of the modern school. A rather timid man is standing before the lieutenant's desk, and Morse isn't paying much attention to him. Reeshover is the name, Lieutenant. R-I-C-H-A-U-V-E-R. Reeshover. I live at 612 North Tennant Lane. Uh, 612 North Tennant Lane. Yeah, I got it. A uh, complaint signed against somebody? Well, no. Not a complaint against anybody I know, I guess. Uh, at least I hope not. You see, I found a body in the front yard. Body in the front yard? You what? Did you say a body? Uh, yes. And I'm pretty sure, uh, at least, I'd be strongly inclined to believe that the girl had been murdered. Murdered? What's the girl's name? I really couldn't say. You see, she's a complete stranger to me, Lieutenant Morse. When did you find a body? Not over a half an hour ago. As soon as I found it, I came right down to the police station as fast as I could. Why didn't you phone? I thought about that. But Elsa, uh, she's my wife, she said, Harlan, my first name's Harlan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go right down there and tell the police about it yourself. See that they come right back here with you. If you phone them, they may be hours getting out here. So uh, I came. Yeah. Your wife's watching the body. Is she to see that nobody touches it or moves anything? Oh, yes, she's very efficient. Uh-huh. Elsa wouldn't let anybody disturb anything. You can depend on that. Oh, hello, Gretchen. Now, well, looks like we got a story for you. Hi, Morse. Hey, wait a minute. Not a story about Mr. Reeshover. R-I-C-H-A-U-V-E-R. Reeshover. You mean you know this man, Gretchen? I don't believe I've ever met the young lady. Oh, sure, Richie. Gretchen Talley, feature writer on the Chronicle. You remember me, Richie. Sure you do. Hey, wait a minute. What's this all about, anyway? Why, Richie's a genius, Morse. A genius for finding bodies. He finds more darn bodies. Now, please, Miss Tally, The I... last one was nearly two years ago. He didn't know from nothing, Richie didn't. Just found the body. It was a very distressing thing. I came home from work and stumbled across the body, right across the doorstep. Yes, I, I remember. And the prosecuting attorney tried his best to hook you up with the case, but it was no dice. You don't tell me. Well, uh, just how many bodies have you found, Mr. Richover? Reeshover. R-I-C-H-A-U-V-E-R. Reeshover. Yeah, 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 Reeshover. Now, well, don't you worry about how I pronounce your name. But uh, it's rather an important thing to me, Lieutenant. Morse. Now, there's a simple name. Nobody could mispronounce that. But Reeshover. You've no idea the fantastic ways people can twist it forget around. Forget it, forget it. I ask you a question. Uh, yes? How many bodies have you found altogether? Up to this one or including it? Including it. Why, uh, uh, three up to this girl. Uh, four altogether. You've no idea what an irritating thing it is to be forever stumbling into corpses, especially when they've been victims of, uh, a violence. Yes, I'll bet I haven't at that. Now, you don't know anything about this girl. It's on your front lawn now, hmm? I can answer that one for you, Morris. He never saw her before in his life. Why... How did you know? Oh, I'm psychic, Richie. And I'm not fussy like the judge was on that last case. You know, I think you people actually suspect me of murder. You don't say. It's rather distressing when a citizen does what he should, makes a report promptly, does his duty, and then... Then Then the nasty old police say to him, I bet you did it. That is irritating, I bet, Richie. How was this dame killed, one you just found? Why, I really don't know, Lieutenant. I've understood it was best not to move the body and... uh, 
So I didn't examine anything. Mm -hmm. Well, you know whether she was killed with a bullet or a meat cleaver, don't you? You could tell me that, couldn't you? I'll bet it wasn't a bullet. Why, no. No, I, I don't believe it was. Those people you find, Ricky, they never are killed by gunfire, are they? Huh? You should have been around when Richie discovered the other bodies, Morris. The pattern was always the same. You found it when you were coming home from work, Richie? Why, uh, yes. And he'll be able to prove that he was at the office all day, Morris. And the coroner will testify that the victim was murdered at least two or three hours before Richie found the body. See here. I don't have to stand for these insinuations. I'm a respectable citizen. You're I... a respectable citizen, all right, Richie. You just have one bad habit. Finding body. <laughs> Really, Lieutenant, this is preposterous. It's not nearly so preposterous as that one man should find four murder victims, Mrs. Richover. Oh, but surely you don't believe, not actually, that Holland has anything to do with, with any of these murders. Well, it isn't reasonable that one man should find four bodies. Look how many people there are who've never found even one body. Why, Holland's practically timid. You've no idea how it distresses him when anything like this happens. And if you keep him locked up in that cell, there's no telling what it might do to him. No. Well, I know what I hope it does to him. What? I hope it breaks him down to the point where I'll get a confession. Oh, that would be much simpler than going to work. Actually going out and finding the real killer, wouldn't it? Look, Mrs. Rishower, I don't blame you for standing up for your husband. But the long arm of coincidence just doesn't reach as far as you want me to think it does. Then you, you absolutely refuse to let Holland free? I sure do. In that case, I guess I'd better get him a lawyer. Yeah, I think that'd be an excellent idea, Mrs. Rishover. And if I were you, I'd get a good one. Because Richie's going to need a dandy to get him out of this. Oh, hello, Gretchen. Well, my own private sleuthing party didn't let me much more. No, I didn't think it would. This is Mrs. Rishover, Gretchen. Miss Morse, the chronicle. I remember, Miss Morse. I hope nothing pleasant happened to her. Still sore about the write-up I gave you and Richie when you got married? Why wouldn't I be angry? Hey, what's this all about? Why, Richie'd found two bodies before he got married. Elsa's folks brought in a story about the wedding, and there wasn't any mention of the body business. I sort of fixed up the wedding story and gave it a little human interest. You were jealous. You were in love with Holland yourself. You Don't you... make me laugh, Mrs. Reshover. It's true. Holland told me about how you fawned all over him after the second body was discovered, how you brought things to him while he was in jail, and when he got out, you invited him up to your apartment for dinner. A you... girl has to eat, hasn't she? Richie was darn good coffee, and I wasn't passing up any bets. Here's the picture, Mort. Why, why, it's a picture of Holland. None other. Well, what were you doing with it? You've no right to have a picture of him. You've I've been out showing that picture to everyone who knew Alice Woodson, Mrs. Reshover. That's the murdered girl's name, in case you're confused. Holland finds so many bodies. Really? I flashed that picture on everyone who ever had anything to do with Alice Woodson. I'm trying to find a link. So you're a detective? None of the people who saw the picture showed the faintest recognition. But this has gone on long enough. Sooner or later, I'll find something to connect him with the murdered girl. You must read a great many detective stories. Richie isn't going to get away with it this time. Three times is plenty. This time, he's out. Hello, Lieutenant. Ah, you ready to start talking yet, Mr. Richover? Reeshover. R-I-C-H-A-U-V-E-R. Reeshover. Yeah, Reeshover. Gretchen Pally picked up a clue, Richie. A frail, slender clue that most cops wouldn't even bother to follow. And I think she's going to make something out of it, Richie. You know, you can't kill four people without making one mistake. What did she find? A girl had a ring in her purse, Richie. A cheap little ring with a rhinestone set in it. I... I don't know a thing about it. It's the kind of a ring you can buy at any dime store. And there was one just like it on your keychain. I didn't have any cheap ring with a rhinestone in it. Not on my keychain or anywhere else. Eh? Who are you trying to bluff, Richie? I didn't, and that's the truth. You didn't give the girl that ring and tell her it was an engagement ring? Of course not. I have told you and told you that I never saw the girl before in my life. I, I know, I know. You're sort of used to telling the police that, Richie. They've been kind of easy on you. But when they get tough, you'd be surprised how tough they can be. You know, they electrocute murderers in this state, Richie. You... You get out of here. 
The actual electrocution isn't so bad, I guess, but uh, it's the getting ready for it. You know, when the barber shaves that spot on your head. You get out of here. You can keep me in this cell, but I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to... No, you don't have to listen to me, Richie. But I wish you'd think about it. If you don't get out of here, I'll... I'll find another body. Ah, now you're talking, Richie. So if I don't get out, you'll find another body. I've never killed anybody yet, but I'll kill you, so help me. You and that cynical leer on your face. That insolent grin when I tell you the truth, you're driving me crazy. (laughs) You've been nuts for a long time, Richie. What was the idea of killing those babes, huh? Stepping out on Elson, afraid you'd get caught? You! I'd like to strangle you. And you might get away with it. You've got away with four murders already. But then again, you might be stretching your luck just a little bit. You might... You... <laughs> what have you done to me? Listen, Richie. You can't... You can't... Oh, oh dear. I wonder... No pulse beat. Yes, he's dead. Quite dead. I told him he'd get into trouble, but... Suicide. Yes, that's it. He has a gun. Have to be careful. Handkerchief. No fingerprints. Put it in his hand. Like this. And press the finger. So. Help! Somebody help! Hurry! Now I'm done for, I suppose. Still... I wonder. What caused Lieutenant Morse to drop over dead? And was Mr. Reshover responsible? Did he murder the other four people whose bodies he found? And can he be convicted? We'll find out in the second act of tonight's story. Meanwhile, here's a brief message from our sponsor. And now, act two of Well, Well, Another Body. The scene is Harlan Reshover's jail cell. His wife and Captain Corlett of the homicide squad are there. And Mr. Reshover seems to be somewhat bewildered. Lieutenant Morse was trying to force a confession from you, wasn't he, Harlan? Why, uh, yes, yes, he was. Quite nasty. And he raised his gun at you and you got scared and grabbed it from him and you shot him to protect yourself, didn't you? Just a minute, Mrs. Richover. Reshover, Captain. R-I-C-H-A-U-V-E-R, Reshover. But Mrs. Reshover. I don't give a hang how you pronounce your name, but your wife can't coach you on a defense. I want to hear what you have to say for yourself. But Harlan needs coaching, Captain Corlett. He's such a timid thing himself, and he'd get all involved. That's the idea, Mrs. Richover. I want him to get involved. But I don't, Captain. I love Harlan and I... You keep quiet for a few minutes. Now, I want you to tell me what happened, Richover. Why, why, it was like, uh, like Elsa said. He, he waved his gun at me and... Hey, yes. Yes, I got frightened. I, I thought he was going to kill me, you see, and yeah, I... Yeah, I see. Listen, Richover, we get awful sore when one of our boys gets killed. Sometimes we kind of lose our tempers. And I think I'm about ready to lose mine right now. But really, Captain... You're a liar, Richover, not even a very good one. I don't know what you mean, Captain. I had the car and I gave Lieutenant Morse the works. As complete an autopsy as ever went through this place. Oh, but really, Captain, you could see the bullet wound in his temple. I don't I see could why... I could see it, too. The police like to get convictions when they think a man's guilty with each other, but they don't frame a guy by bumping themselves off. But Hollins explained to you why he had to shoot Lieutenant Morse. He... Look, lady, the guy was dead when that shot was fired. Dead? But, oh, but that's silly, isn't it? If he was dead, then why should Hollins... Morse died of poisoning. He had a fresh pack of cigarettes in his pocket with only one gone. That one was in his left hand, about two-thirds smoke. Each one of those cigarettes contained enough poison to kill a horse. For heaven's sakes. The way I figure it, Richover gave Morse that package of cigarettes, not figuring he'd light one while he was still in his cell. But, well, that's not right at all, Captain. Morse lit a cigarette and dropped dead right then and there. Richover was panic-stricken because there was another body to chalk up against him. That's why he got out Morse's gun and fixed it up to look like suicide. But it was suicide, Captain Corrett, really. Look. Everything about it was phony. 
The gun wasn't in the right position in Morse's hand. It wasn't held against his head at a natural angle. And part of the powder burn was on this cement floor. You don't think a man lies down on the cement floor to put a bullet through his head, do you? Uh, uh, no, I, I suppose not. Please, Captain, can't he talk to me alone? Just a minute. Uh, yeah, sure, sure he can. I'll leave right away. Now, Harlan, it was practically like the captain said, Elsa. No, Harlan, don't be a fool. But I... I have a microphone hidden somewhere in your cell. They're listening to every word you say. Whisper to me so nothing could pick up the sound. Then I'll figure out a story. You see, I'll tell them what you said to me. And you must stick to whatever story I make up. Understand? I, uh... Yes, I, I understand, Elsa. You're a novel baby in the woods, Harlan. But I love you. Honestly, I do. What, what do you want? I'm here on business, Mrs. Reshover. Don't worry that it's a social call. I don't want to speak to you. I imagine you don't. But this has to be done, I guess. You've no right to come barging into my home like this, you know. I just wanted to check something, Mrs. Reshover. What? You smoke, don't you? Why, occasionally, yes, not regularly. Why? Have a package of cigarettes around now? Why, I believe so. But what business of that? Don't bother. I see one in the ashtray that doesn't have the brand name burned off. Oh, very interesting. What are you driving at? The brand name's the same as the kind Lieutenant Morse was smoking when he was killed. Interesting. See here, you surely don't think you're I... implicated in any of Richie's murders? Oh, dear, no. But it is funny, isn't it, that you should smoke that same brand? By the way, there was something else I wanted to ask you about. Yes? When Richie found that first body, were you acquainted with him? I... No, I didn't know him at all. I remember when Harlan and I were introduced, they told me he'd found a gangster's body in front of his door, and I, I was fascinated. But that second body, you knew him when that one was found, didn't you? I, yes, it, it upset him terribly, and I was so sorry for him. You knew the second victim, didn't you? Why? No. I'm afraid you're lying about that, Mrs. Reshover. I think you did know the second victim. I said I didn't really you being outrageous. I, I think maybe you can commit quite a bit. The way I figure it, Richie's finding the first victim was an accident. One of those things that could happen to anyone. But it gave you an idea. There was a certain party you wanted to get rid of. Get out of here, I won't stand for you. You killed the second one and arranged things so Richie would find the body. I rather think he suspected, and that's why he married you. He was afraid to do anything different, afraid you'd kill him, too. You can't talk to me this way. You lie about my knowing the man who was murdered. I didn't. You married Harlan Reshover to keep him quiet about you and what you've done. And then you said about trying to get rid of him. Get rid of him? That's rather funny. There's more than one way to get rid of a person. Harlan Reshover had found two murder victims. You reasoned that if he found a third one, he'd be suspected, which he was. I was frantic when it happened. Oh, you're a third victim. You picked an innocent girl, one with whom you couldn't possibly be connected. Your sole purpose in killing was to convict Richie of murder. That's not so. When it didn't work, you picked a fourth one, another girl. You wanted to be sure this time, so you put a cheap ring in her purse and put a duplicate of it on Richie's keychain. You lie. I never did such a thing. The game's about over, Mrs. Reshover. I found the ten-cent store clerk who sold you those rings. She's identified your picture. Her name's Ann Burkle, and she lives in a rooming house over on Guide Street, 314 Guide Street. She'll swear that she sold you the rings. So instead of sending Richie to the chair, those rings are going to take care of you. But good. Goodbye, Mrs. Reshover. Just where do you think you're going? I'm going over to the police station to get Captain Corlett. I'm going to take him up to Ann Burkle's room. I don't believe you are, Gretchen. Oh! Where, you... where did you get that gun? I've always had it around, Gretchen. I never knew when it might come in handy. What are you going to do to me? That all depends, Gretchen. There's the phone. What? I said, there's the phone. Go ahead and call Captain Cornet. What? I said to phone Captain Cornet. 
Tell him to go to 314 Guide Street and question Ann Bilko. I, I... I don't get it. You mean you actually left I him? mean you'd better call him if you don't want to get a bullet through your pretty head. But I... You know the number. Go ahead. You're going to kill me. That remains to be seen, Gretchen. Go ahead. Captain Corlett, please. Hello, Captain. I'm at Elsa Rishover's, and she's holding a gun against my head, Captain. Get here as fast as you can. Thanks. There. Now, you don't dare kill me. You don't dare. Who thought I'd be afraid to tell him I was here? That you were threatening my life. But I... I did, I... I doubt that very much, Gretchen. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Richover, drop that gun. No, thank you, Captain. I think I'll just go right on holding it, if you don't mind. What? No, no, don't worry. I won't hurt anybody unless it's necessary. What's this all about, anyway? Gretchen Talley was in love with Harlan. Fell in love with him during the course of his trial after he'd found the first body. She figured that finding a second body would be serious. You lie! I'll talk, Gretchen. She arranged for Harlan to find a second body, and then she furnished the alibi for him when it looked like he was in a tight spot. It was easy enough for her to do because she'd committed the murder. I can check the records on the alibi, I guess. I helped him a little in order to get a story, that's all. Gretchen thought he'd be so grateful to her that he'd marry her. But Harlan was in love with me. And we were married. And when Harlan and I had been married about a year, there was another body, this time a girl. The police hounded him, but his alibi was so perfect they finally had to release him. And then this last one. I went to Lieutenant Morse and told him what I suspected. He began investigating and he had an accident. Well, you lied. You never talked to Lieutenant Morse alone. She was in Lieutenant Morse's office when they checked Harlan's personal effects. She found the finger ring on Harlan's key ring. Nobody else had noticed it. And she said it was a clue she'd like to follow up. How about that, Gretchen? Why, yes. There'd been a ring in the girl's purse. Why wouldn't I check a good story? I've never seen the girl she talks about, this Ann Burkle, who was supposed to have sold me the ring. But I'll bet if you'll go to her room, you'll find she's been murdered. If she's dead... You killed her. Oh, darn if I know what to believe you. She oh. never intended to convict Harlan. All along, all the murders she committed were supposed to get me out of the picture and get Harlan for her. Maybe we better let Mr. Richover get into this conversation. He doesn't seem near as guilty as he did. What did you do with Gretchen Talley, Captain? She's in a straitjacket, Mrs. Richover. Stark mad. Is this the stenographer, Captain? Yeah. All set to take it down, Sonny? Sure. Just have him go a little easy, though. I won't hurry. Ready? I, Harlan Reeshover, R-I-C-H-A-U-V-E-R, make this statement of my own free will without any promise of clemency. I have never killed anyone. Miss Talley and I were business partners, and I was completely unaware that she had any romantic attachment for me until the episode of the ring. Episode of Rage. Okay. The first murder victim I found, I know nothing about. The other three whose bodies I found were killed by three different people whose names I will give. Miss Talley, through her newspaper connections, had gained an acquaintance with numerous underworld characters. They paid us very handsomely to have me find the bodies. But through suspicion completely away from the real murderers. Yet, there was never any real evidence against me except my being in the right place the right time. Right place the right time. Until the ring business, I had no idea that Gretchen Talley was in love with me. Gretchen Talley had never killed anyone until the Lieutenant Morse and Ann Burkle murders. It was then I realized that she was trying to implicate my wife, trying to get her out of the way. The Lieutenant Morse murder made it apparent that Morse had been on the right track. With this finding of Ann Burkle's body, there remains no alternative but to clear my wife from all suspicion, which I gladly do. Harlan Reeshover. R-I-C-H-A-U-V-E-R.